Elon Musk has recently leaked an insane Starship artificial gravity concept idea on Twitter. This concept would include a tether between two Starships which would allow astronauts to feel artificial gravity on their mission to Mars. Even though the idea seems crazy, it might actually work. What is it? Let's find out. Before we move on with the video, if you are new here, we warmly welcome you. Make sure to subscribe to Liftoff and turn on the notification feature so you will never miss any of the space and SpaceX news. Let's get started. We've all seen science fiction movies where a group of daring astronauts board a spaceship and are sent into space. After leaving Earth's atmosphere, the crew embarks on a voyage to the moon, Mars, or another region of deep space. In terms of science fiction, this is an ancient story. This has been shown in so many different science fiction films that it is difficult to recall an example off the top of your head. The crew is always walking alongside their spaceship or space station, wandering around just like they would here on Earth. But wait, how is that even possible? Doesn't gravity have a lesser effect in space than on Earth? That's right, there is far less gravity once you leap into space. Yet, in these movies, people are continuously prancing around as if this isn't an issue. This is because in science fiction, artificial gravity exists. Even if it doesn't exist in the actual world, at least not yet. Artificial gravity has always been something that many scientists and engineers have wanted to turn from a fantasy into a reality, even though there has been no success as of yet. There are many reasons why artificial gravity is important, including some very serious ones related to the health and well-being of astronauts. Still, it has yet to make the leap from the movie screen to the real world. This is what Elon Musk hopes to change for his Starship project, as it intended to carry passengers into deep space for extended periods of time. Why would we need to create artificial gravity for Starship, you may ask? After spending a year in space as part of NASA's twin study, he found readjusting to life on Earth to be agonizing. In order to prevent such health effects, in order to prevent such health effects before crews even reach deep space destinations like the moon or Mars, where the long-term effects of low G are still unknown, mitigation strategies will be needed. Seeing astronaut Scott Kelly struggle to walk after a year in space should serve as a harsh lesson to anybody considering a trip to Mars. Despite a rigorous workout routine, the finest treatment available in 50 years of space medicine, recovering from protracted zero-g remains a huge physical struggle. Let's also not forget that the very shape of our bodies is given shape by gravity on Earth. Gravity is one of the main reasons why our muscles haven't receded or shrunk over the years. If gravity is absent, then our bodies will begin to realize that there is no need for muscles to keep us functioning normally. Thus, muscle atrophy occurs. Rigorous muscle building routines and steroid treatments are mandatory for astronauts who spend long periods in space. In extreme cases, astronauts could literally be killed by normal gravity if they spend way too much time in space. With bone and muscle breaking down, alongside blood vessels bursting due to the sudden shift in pressure. There are two elements that help to minimize the risk of a journey to Mars. The outbound trip to Mars is projected to take 120 days, or approximately one-third of Kelly's tenure in orbit, and the gravity on Mars is only 40% that of Earth. However, these considerations are irrelevant when considering that any Mars trip will require astronauts to, rather than beginning a protracted period of recovery from zero-g exposure, begin punishingly hard work. Arriving at Mars weakened will be useless at best and deadly at worst. How can this issue be resolved? Artificial gravity is the creation of an inertial force that mimics the effects of a gravitational force, usually by rotation. Artificial gravity or rotational gravity is thus the appearance of a centrifugal force in a rotating frame, as opposed to the force experienced in linear acceleration, which by the equivalence principle is indistinguishable from gravity. So naturally, the earliest and most common examples proposed to make artificial gravity aim to build spinning ships. Similar to the classic rotor carnival ride, centrifugal forces will press the crew and equipment against the vessel's interior, mimicking gravity. Implementing this capacity entails arranging the ship's construction in such a way that a ring rolls around the ship's long axis. Different centrifugal accelerations can be obtained depending on the rotational speed and the radius of the ring. 
However, the Starship was clearly not constructed with these issues in mind. The ship's long axis is the 160 foot nose to tail axis, with a 30 foot diameter. This results in a 15 foot radius for acceleration, necessitating a fast roll for the spacecraft, putting tremendous strain on the space frame. Worse, as the crew moved up, that is, towards the heart of the rolling spaceship, the forces would diminish. At this tiny radius, there would be, very certainly, a significant variation in artificial gravity between the head and the toes, resulting in a Coriolis force-induced motion sickness. Clearly, the strategy is untenable. YouTuber Small Stars has proposed a concept that he calls the Gravity Link Starship, GLS, a variation of SpaceX's Starship that will be able to provide its own artificial gravity. The idea was inspired in part by science fiction. Depending on how realistic a franchise is trying to be, Starships will either generate their own gravity using some special device or through rotating sections. While the former concept is much like the hyperdrive, the latter is something that is entirely feasible. After conducting some research into centripetal forces, small stars arrived at the idea for the GLS. He explains in his videos, the GLS is basically a hub ship, like the hub of a wheel, where the payload bay is filled with a truss that unfolds and deploys robotically, thus serving as the wheel's spokes. It would be positioned between two passenger ships and would link up with them during the six plus month long journey to Mars. Once linked up, the passenger ships would swivel around to reorient themselves and fire their thrusters to impart momentum to the wheel. Once enough velocity was generated to simulate Earth's normal gravity of 9.8 meters per second, or 1G, the passenger ships would reorient themselves again to face inward toward the hub ship. For the remainder of the journey, those aboard the passenger ships would experience the sensation of being pulled down thanks to the centripetal force created by the rotational wheel. SpaceX has to deal with having a rotating starship itself, which makes orienting antenna precisely very difficult, creating communication challenges. As the antenna rotate, they will continuously lose and regain signal as the rotation moves the antenna out of the orientation range. The starship is expected to power its systems with solar panels, which are vastly more effective in space. With a rotating spacecraft, keeping the panels orientated towards the sun to capture energy can be problematic depending on the nature of the rotation and the orientation of the panels. So what do you think? Do you think they can do it? Or do you think they will be bound by the conventional limits of spaceflight for a very long time? Maybe they'll come up with a special device. Tell us in the comment section below. If you like the video and want to see more, subscribe and hit the notification feature. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.